but do you like it? Just between us. Oh, you like it a little bit, don't you? Right? When the episode moves to being just Matson, Kendall, and Roman, I thought the the tension in that scene, the editing, the direct, like it was so good. I was like right there being like, I think I know what a win here would look like for one side or the other. But then he said that number and I was like, I don't, I don't know right now if that's a win. Now you, you say like Kendall and Roman are trying to figure it out. And I think if I'm to grade their performance this episode, it would be probably a C minus up until the end at which it would plummet to F. <laughs> yeah. I was going to go like D plus there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't care what you think. You're a tribute band. Imagine Logan in the situation with Madsen. That is not how Logan would behave because Logan would yeah. be very clear about what he wanted. Now, to be fair, yeah. as Roman points out, their dad did just die two days ago, you know, and that is a very reasonable thing to be upset about and to be distracted by uh, and so on. But like they look very, very incompetent and outmatched this whole episode. And I think that's intentional. Like, I think you're supposed to think that they're doing a bad job. Especially because um, so. if we, again, think back to the first season and they've been in this exact position before where when Logan couldn't do his job, they got named as like interim co-CEOs or whatever. It was like COO and CEO. And they similarly just clowned that situation <laughs> into the ground. Yeah, they have learned nothing in their intervening seasons of the show, basically. Right? And it's like it's like we're watching them clown themselves into the ground again, but like in a slightly more elevated way. <laughs> right. I mean, here's the thing. I would actually argue that Roman is overall like decently competent. Yeah. Uh, throughout most of it, like the stuff he's saying is all pretty reasonable. It's all very professional, and that's what makes his break at the end very bad. What yeah. What is bad though is not that like Roman didn't say the right words. It's that they don't know what they're doing. They're not in sync. They didn't even evaluate this as a possibility. They are consciously acting out of petty personal reasons, not right, right, bi- or, not sound or, business strategy. They didn't game out any of this. They weren't like okay. Scenario one, Matson declines. Scenario two, Matson offers wants to buy the whole thing. Scenario three, like these these are like basic things that any executive would kind of yeah uh, ha- have potentially planned out for, and yeah, um, they did not. Just passing time till you come up with a counter. You want to do this here? Matson is like humiliating these guys at every turn because. Earlier on, Madsen was like, hey, just in case you don't know how this works, like typically I say something and then you say what you want. And that's how it's just like Madsen is absolutely right. Like he is 100 percent correct that that is how it should work. And these guys, Kendall and Roman, are just completely screwing it. It just is He's an hard. emotional terrorist. It- <laughs> It's painful. So you're like, you're like, oh, poor Kendall. I'm like, it's painful to watch these people be so incompetent. That's all I'm saying. It's not even necessarily that I'm like pitying Kendall and Roman in any Mm -hmm. of these scenes, but it is very obvious to me that Matson is also not very serious about a lot of this stuff. Right. And And he's not, he's not a nice person, you know? No. And he does seem to enjoy like tormenting, like tormenting them and then pointing out that he's tormenting them and getting away with it. Kendall and Roman, they talk about tanking the deal because Kendall ostensibly is like, hey, I like us running this company. I like running the ship. I think we're good at it. And I don't want to stop. I mean, do you? Roman freaking hates this guy's guts. So he's up for tanking the deal. Uh, They can't tank the deal in such a way that it looks like they tank the deal, though, because then the board would say, hey, these guys are acting against their fiduciary duties. Right, because every single person who's not them... Wants. wants to it would be benefit. paid above yes. market value for their <laughs> yes. shares in this company right now. So Kendall springs into action. He's like, we're going to seed stories with uh, the news media that there's a culture clash. And also we're going to stream screen Calypsotron for the uh, Gojo staff. So they see what terrible assets they're purchasing and how much trouble it's going to be. That is the plan as they head into a final conversation with Madsen. Yeah. Also, so, uh, shout out Jess. Because that woman has clearly been working insane hours to pull off the things that Kendall asks for on a whim, including a screening of a movie that doesn't exist yet. Try to sabotage the deal, but not make it seem like it's coming from them. Uh, They ride up the gondola with Madsen, and then Madsen basically sees through all their BS. Are you for real? Are you Scooby-Dooing me here? 
And they'll, they say, no, we're just trying to let you know how much of a troubled shoot Calypsotron is. And, you know, just it, trying to be straight with you here. Like you're trying to, and he's like, he, he instantly sees through them because he says a few things about their father. He says, you know, your father was a prick, but at least he knew what he wanted. I mm -hmm. think he'd be embarrassed if he saw you now. I think he'd be embarrassed if he saw you too now. There's two big boys playing Scooby-Doo's. Which are both things that I think are actually true, but you know, as you said. Well, Logan was embarrassed <laughs> before, so. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, Roman blows up, and it's actually a very powerful, very good scene, because you, you sense like Roman, who has been until this point bottling it up, not sharing his feelings, he finally is like, this is too much. Like, I need to, uh, I need to say something. And he's like, we're going to put sand in the gears. It's going to, we're not going to respond to emails for six months. It's going to suck for you to acquire us. There was no part of you that could just be like, hey, let's reschedule and move this because, you know, their dad just died. And Kieran Culkin was incredible in this episode. He he never shows emotion like that in general, right? Like, because he's too cool to have emotions. He's and, a middle child, which, yeah. Relatable. And for him to like sh show emotion like that is both extremely unprofessional. It's like the most unprofessional thing he's ever said and very rare for the character. And I really felt for him in that moment that he hates this guy, this guy who made him work two days after his dad died, who's trying to basically disgrace the legacy of his dad, who he has complicated feelings about. And if you tell the board it's in any of this, I'm just going to say it was a negotiating tactic. And you know what? Maybe it is, but it's not. I love how Roman says... If you tell anyone I said this to you, I'm just going to say it was a negotiating tactic, which is um yeah. Uh which is a line that I need to use more in my life. <laughs> if I'm ever uh, arguing with someone else, if you tell anyone else I said this, it, I'm just going to say it was a negotiating tactic. So I'm going to um, say I was speaking in a humorous tone. <laughs> yes. In a comic vein. <laughs> yeah. Is what I was commenting. I think that this was a really important moment for Roman and Kendall in terms of like a limit to their ability to like really make a difference in the way that they want to. Like you can just kind of see how they are being held back by themselves, <laughs> but certainly by everyone around them. Like they just, they, they don't have any allies left, including Shiv now possibly because mm -hmm. they clearly alienated her enough to the point that now that relationship is under question. There is this weird moment when Madsen says, you guys are screwed now. My perception, and I'm not sure if this is correct, is he's saying you're screwed up because you've basically showed your hand as to like what you want to have happen. And now I will come in with an offer so high that if you turn it down, you will be fired. Like you will not be able to survive at the at the company. Right. Um, that was my that was my sense of what he was saying in that moment, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't know if you had a read on it, Kim. Yeah, I would agree with that. Until I knew what he was going to do, I wasn't right, sure exactly. what that meant. Yeah, but yeah, then exactly, once yeah. once Frank got the call and I was like, oh, I guess he just meant in terms of like, they won't get what they want. Again, red flags with Matson being the one who calls Shiv directly in that moment. And it's like, send me a picture of their faces. But it's at that point that you see like, oh yeah, I guess they really are. Like, I guess Kendall and Roman really are pretty bad at their jobs today. You know, like I think they are not doing well at this. Yeah. Um, they didn't do well at either thing. Like <laughs> they weren't the ones who negotiated a better price, nor did they succeed in their actual plan, which was to tank the deal. The moment when he was finally like, I'm just trying to make you rich. I was like, yeah, guys, just take, <laughs> take the money. Yes. Like, <laughs> wow. I didn't I didn't know is this is that Logan Roy on the other end of the podcast just now? <laughs> I thought I was talking with Kim Renfro uh, hey, hosting the decoding TV. I want them to take the money and heal, okay? I'm a double-sided oh, yeah. coin here. Take yeah, the money, yeah. also use it for extensive therapy. <laughs> Hey everyone, David Chen here. Thank you so much for watching that video from Decoding TV. If you want to get an audio version of the show, all you got to do is go to podcast.decodingtv.com. And if you want to support what we do, get ad-free episodes of the podcast and also bonus episodes of the podcast, go to decodingtv.com and become a paid member. Of course, you can also like and subscribe for more. We appreciate it. Thanks. See you later.